This lecture, I'm going to discuss the classification of herbivores and overall, the big picture. What I really want you to focus on is your specific or your particular um, scenario, rangeland scenario, and how you can use herbivores to as a tool to manage rangelands. So just a quick overview of this lecture. We're going to discuss feeding types of ruminants. The three different feeding types are concentrate selectors, intermediate feeders, and the last group are the roughage feeders or the grazers. So the first feeding type of ruminants are the concentrate selector. These animals can't tolerate um, large amounts of fiber in their diet. They also consume plants with high cell wall, oh, sorry, with high cell contents and low cell wall components. Um, these animals also have a very rapid rate of fermentation, meaning they eat small quantities of food and they pass it um, through their rumen. It doesn't stay in there very long. And rumination is less important. Rumination is a process by which they retain forage. These ruminants retain forage and, um, and ferment and break down that plant material in their stomach. And lastly, they feed on smaller amounts frequently. So examples of concentrate selectors are white-tailed deer, uh, the roe deer that you see in the bottom right, and moose. So these animals feed primarily on forbs and shrubs throughout the year. And um, I've highlighted the ruminants, but some of the non-ruminant concentrate selectors include bears and the, uh, the birds, which are the, the granivores that consume seeds. And once again, these animals don't do well with diets high in cell wall components. The next group are the intermediate feeders. These animals are adapted to either browsing or grazing. They shift feeding behavior according to the plant availability. So one part of the year, they might tend to consume the browse species, while another part of the year, they might consume grass and, and new growth. So they eat less frequent, frequently than concentrate selectors and more frequently than grazers. And lastly, there's a large variation in dietary fiber content between different species. So examples of intermediate feeders include goats, mule deer, and sheep can even be intermediate feeders as well. So ultimately, these are opportunistic feeders. They, they pick and choose depending on what's available. If the grass is nice and green in the spring, then they'll tend to graze on the grass. However, when the grass matures and it has more cell wall components, has more lignin in it, cellulose, hemicellulose, these animals are going to go and consume more of the forbs or the um, browse species. The third classification of ruminants are grazers or roughage feeders. These animals um, eat mostly grass. They have very large rumens to process forages and they retain these, um, these forages for a longer period of time, so they can digest the high percentage of cell wall components. So examples of grazers include cattle, bison, and even sheep. Even though I said sheep can be intermediate feeders, uh, they, can, they tend to be grazers during part of the year as well. So these animals avoid shrubs that are high in volatile oils, such as junipers, um, rabbit brush, and various sage brushes. And we'll discuss exactly why, but it has to do with their salivary glands. So at this point, I just want you to really focus back on these three different types of um, ruminants, the concentrate selectors, intermediate feeders, and the grazers. And from a, from a range management standpoint, I want to make sure that you know 
what your objective is, what your management objective is, and which one of these three um, groups of animals can you use to accomplish your goal. So let's go ahead and move on. This diagram um, highlights the different feeding types. On the left hand side we have concentrate selectors, in the middle intermediate feeding types, and on the right are the grazers. So concentrate selectors. These animals are predominantly browsers um, such as the roe deer, the moose, and even white-tailed deer, and they can experience digestive upsets when their diets don't, con don't contain plants in high cell con with high cell contents. Um, yet, they may consume new growth after fire, or even in the spring they'll consume grass um, that, is, uh, that is high in cell contents. And, uh, but ultimately, these animals are going to feed frequently. At the very bottom, you have the feeding rhythm. And you can see that, that these animals feed every, feed every um, two or three hours. Now, the intermediate feeding types include goats, even mule deer. And these animals really adjust to the plant availability and um, have the ability to adapt to different plants. So these animals may st stick strictly to browse species during the wintertime. However, in the springtime, when there's new growth in the grasses, they might um, increase the amount of grass that they have in their diet. Now, grazers on the right-hand side, um, these are animals that include cattle, elk, bighorn sheep, bison, and even domestic sheep. They predominantly consume grass that are, that are high in cell wall components and will eat forbs and shrubs during the wintertime when the grass is unavailable. Ultimately, these animals feed less frequently and retain food longer. Now I want to focus on the mouth and the head. Uh, mouth tissue is cornified in all ruminants. And what I mean by cornified is that it's layered. It has a layer where the external layer um, really protects their, their mouth. So it protects their mouth from rough and sharp plant surfaces. Grazers' mouths and lips are more cornified than intermediate types and also concentrate selectors. Now the more selective feeder, feeders like the concentrate selectors have softer, more, de more delicate tissue. And um, ultimately the shape of the head and dexterity of the lips and tongue are determined by the animal selectivity. So the browsers are going to tend to have a more nimble and flexible head and, and a long tongue so they can um, reach around and really select the, the most immature plant material in, um, in, in browse or on the ground. So I don't know if you've ever seen a, a giraffe, but or uh, I'm sure you've seen a giraffe, but whenever they're, they're browsing, they're, they have this long tongue that reaches around the, the branches and the trees and, and selects what they want. So animals with more, um, I guess, nimble heads are typically going to be your concentrate selectors. Now, if they have big bulky heads, they'll typically probably eat. eat. In this slide, I want to focus on salivary glands. The salivary glands consist of 0.1 to 0.2% of the total body weight in concentrate selectors. Now, in, in the grazers, the salivary glands only consist of 0.03 to 0.1% of the total body weight. So the conclusion here is that salivary glands and concentrate selectors play a, a greater role. And that role is because the concentrate selectors consume browse species which are high in plant secondary compounds. Um, they have tannins and Due to that fact, these salivary glands need to bind the tannins. So the concentrate selectors can absorb protein. Tannins inhibit protein absorption in ruminants. So since the concentrate selectors have larger salivary glands, they can bind that protein, I'm sorry, that, 
those tannins and ultimately the protein is accessible to the animal. Now the salivary glands are more serous in concentrate selectors. That means the, it's more liquidy, it's more fluid. And um, one of the reasons is that the saliva needs to really wash the ingesta um, through the digestive tract, through the stomach. And um, it's going to be relatively quickly at the concentrate selector because, once again, we know that their diet consists of a more soluble plant fraction compared to grazers. Now, this illustration um, shows the differences in the size of salivary glands between concentrate selectors, intermediate feeders, and, and grazers. In the top left, we have a roe deer. And the parotid, that's actually one of the glands, is 0.22% of the body weight. Now, to the right is the red deer, and that's an intermediate feeder. And that salivary gland is 0.08 to 0.1%, which is more than half um, the size of the salivary glands of the concentrate selector. Now, on the right-hand side, you can see that the mouflon, the salivary glands here, um, are a lot smaller compared to the rest of them. Now, this particular slide, I want to focus on um, a couple of the, the anatomy, the differences between concentrate selectors and grazers. In particular, um, look at the, the liver. The concentrate selector is going to have a larger liver compared to the grazer. And um, that's due to the fact that the liver is going to detoxify um, the, the tannins in the diet of the concentrate selector. Whereas in the grazer, since they're consuming grasses, grasses um, don't have the, the high concentration of tannins that browse species that, um, do. So their liver is, isn't going to be as developed because it's not going to have to, to um, purify the blood from those toxic compounds. Now, focusing on the head, lips, and tongue, the more selective feeders have long, thin, oh, sorry, longer and thinner heads, longer lips, and larger mouths. They're going to have longer, more pointed tongues, prehensile lips, and tongue, allowing for sorting through plant material. And the design of the head and mouth allows the animal to pick um, out leaves and seeds. So the more selective feeders like the concentrate selectors, once again, are going to have nimble heads, long tongues, and they're going to be able to really pick and choose um, and discriminate between the quality of plant material that they're going to consume. Where the less selective feeders are going to have shorter and wider heads, smaller mouths, and short lips. Um, their tongues are going to be short, fat, and blunt. And the grazers don't need to pick through their food um, and in order to find seeds and leaves. They just eat plants with, um, that are high in cell wall components. In this slide, I want to focus on the teeth and the jaw of concentrate selectors and grazers. Concentrate selectors' teeth are more fragile but more firmly attached at the root. They also have an intense initial chewing and short rumination alternate with short feeding periods. So they go out and eat, grab a little bite to eat, and they'll go hide and ruminate and they'll leave and eat maybe three or four times every six hours. And it's thought that these concentrate selectors do that because they're smaller animals and susceptible to being preyed upon. Whereas the, the grazers um, have teeth that are tougher, but more easily lost. They, they have wide um, shovel-shaped incisors and their molars are high with sharp ridges. So, Grazers have a brief initial chewing period, and then they have a long rumination period. So the grazers are going to eat about three times a day, and it's not as often 
as concentrate selectors because the grazers are typically bulkier and can um, protect themselves. Not in all cases, but um, in some cases. In this slide, I'm going to focus on the size and the volume of the rumen. The grazers have larger rumens. It's more subdivided, more complex than the rumen of a concentrate selector. And ultimately, there's a greater amount of attachment. That's more. Um, there's a more fibrous attachment on the grazer rumen than the concentrate selector rumen. So, the gra the grazing rumen is more developed because they have um, diets which are higher in cell wall components and that's going to stay in the stomach a lot longer and so due to that fact um, you have more lobes in the rumen of the grazer compared to the concentrate selector which consumes diets low in cell wall components. Um, one of the facts is that concentrate selectors are less likely to develop, to develop bloat compared to grazers. Now, bloat's a condition uh, where typically grazers, like cattle, consume young legumes high in protein. Examples of these legumes include clover or, or alfalfa. And once the ruminants consume, uh, typically grazers consume this these lung young legumes, it creates a froth in the rumen and it ultimately distends the rumen and um, the ruminant can't release gas and ultimately that can lead to the death. The microorganisms are producing so much gas in the rumen that the, the ruminant can't expel the gas and ultimately the animal can die. So this is more likely to occur in the grazer compared to the concentrate. Next, I'm going to look at body length and intestinal length ratio. Now, grazers are going to have um, a greater ratio of body length to intestinal length, and concentrate selectors are going to have the smallest. So, ultimately, species with a greater proportion of fiber to concentrate in the diet will have longer intestines. So, we would expect for the ox on the bottom to have larger uh, or longer intestines um, in regards to the percentage of body length compared to the concentrate selector. And once again, that's because the diet of the, the grazer has more fiber and it needs to be absorbed uh, more compared to the concentrate selector. This slide focuses on the cecum versus rumen ratio. And in the concentrate selector, um, they consume diets that are low in fiber and high in cell content. Now, if you can remember, the plant material in the food passes through the stomach of concentrate selectors fairly quickly. And ultimately, a lot of that material isn't, di isn't fermented. So the cecum is more developed in the concentrate selector because this is a site where fermentation can continue to take place. Now in contrast, the grass eater has, um, consumes food high in fiber or high in cell wall components and they retain, they have a longer retention time. So the grass stays longer inside their stomach and the rumen microorganisms are able to break down that fiber. Ultimately, the, um, the small intestine in the grazer is going is to be greater than that of the small intestine um, of the concentrator, concentrate selector as it relates to total um, body weight. In summary, there are three distinct types of ruminants based on their feeding strategies, their concentrate selectors, intermediate feeders, and grazers. The concentrate selector's digestive anatomy is adapted for diets high in cell contents and low in cell wall components. The intermediate types' diets 
adjust with changes in forage production and, and quality. And lastly, the grazer's digestive anatomy is adapted for diets high in cell wall components and low in cell wall or in cell contents.